Hey guys, my name's Sam, and today we're going to be talking about energy production at UBC. There is scientific consensus that the next three years will be critical in mitigating the dangerous warming effects of climate change, and that marginalized populations are most vulnerable. I'd also like to acknowledge before we start, this filming will be taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. Energy production isn't just electricity, it's also greenhouse gas emissions, and so it matters in the way that we produce it, and also the individual choices and actions that we make every single day. So while resources may seem really unconnected from our lives, we may think about water and food being taken from outside the city and being brought in. In fact, water and energy and food are produced much closer to us than we think, and in fact, nature actually exists inside the city. So it's really important the way we think about how we produce our resources as well as the way we consume our resources in our daily lives. Who are you and what is your role at UBC? Uh, my name is John Madden. I'm the Director of Sustainability and Engineering within UBC's Campus and Community Planning. So my name is Orion Henderson at UBC. I'm the Director of uh, Energy Planning and Innovation. What are the goals of the current Climate Action Plan? So the ultimate goal of the Climate Action is to elim eliminate fossil, f fossil use, uh, f fuel use on campus. By 2020, to achieve a 67% reduction in GHG emissions below 2007 levels, and by 2050, essentially achieve carbon neutrality. So what building are we in right now? Can you tell us a little bit about this facility? Yeah, so we're in the BRDF, and that stands for Bioenergy Research and Demonstration Facility. This is providing about a third of our energy needs on campus, and it's doing that not with fossil fuels or natural gas, it's doing that instead with renewable biomass, uh, wood waste, that would otherwise be decomposing or go to landfill, and instead we're taking that and converting it into something useful that we can use. So wood is... Uh uh, essentially gasified, so it's turning that wood to, uh, to a gas, which is mainly hydrogen and, and, and carbon monoxide, and then burning that gas, or syngas, as it's commonly known, in a boiler to heat up water. We also have an uh, electrical generation engine, uh, and that engine uses renewable natural gas uh, to generate uh, electricity for use on the campus. Probably the most, you know, one exciting project we're looking at is, is expanding the bioenergy facility with another 12 megawatts of um, thermal generation capacity. Well, that project would not only expand our bioenergy capacity and reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, it would also diversify our fuel supply, making the campus um, more resilient and it would also increase the total capacity we have for thermal energy on campus, uh, which will allow us to meet uh, the demands of growth um, over the next 10 years. Now, with the advent of cheap data storage, we can start building up really large data sets of, uh, of all of the sensory information and start mining it for insights into how our buildings are operating and, and insights in how, into how we can, we can get them to perform uh, more efficiently. Energy efficiency or energy conservation is the cheapest form of, of energy there is. Uh, it's a lot cheaper in general to save energy uh, than it is to, uh, to purchase energy. How would you define what a green building is? Well, in the context of UBC, we're defining green buildings as buildings that will eventually contribute to the kind of net positive contributions in ecological and human health to create a, a connection between the human built environment and the natural environment. And so we need to really think holistically in terms of buildings and their contribution to the environment in which they are situated. Obviously, you know, buildings can be designed to be the most sustainable buildings, but there's a human element to it as well. Because sustainability is really driven by kind of human behavior. It doesn't only matter in the way that we produce our energy, it also matters in the way that we consume it every single day. How much does individual action matter relative to the institutional actions that you were talking about earlier in terms of energy consumption and emissions? It's critically important. We're essentially a small city. We have, let's say, close to 70,000 people on campus during the day. The activities that individuals take, the decisions that individuals take in terms of the choice of transportation, you know, taking uh, 
public transit versus driving a private automobile. Incenting uh, taking a bicycle uh, is, is really critical to moving the dial on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. UBC has estimated that in order to get to campus, the commuting emissions for everybody for a whole year is roughly 30,000 tons of CO2, which is almost the amount that UBC as a campus produces. What do you think the number one thing an individual could do at UBC to reduce their emissions? The number one thing is probably related to both transportation and diet. Think about you know, um, the choices that you make in terms of what you consume or avoid consuming. All of these actions individually amount to a big impact if we all collectively work together. Not only do our consumption habits matter towards reducing emissions, but also our investments matter. UBC's endowment is around 1.5 billion Canadian dollars, and only 0.6% of that is actually divested from fossil fuels. The strategic plan's commitment is to exemplify sustainability in all aspects of the university. Do you believe that external investments should also align with uh, this plan in terms of divestment from fossil fuels? As a university, we have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that the investments we make are prudent. My personal view is, is yeah, I think that there are, there is a danger of um, stranded, stranded assets in the conventional um, energy um, industry, and so, you know, I hope it's something that the university is watching. UBC in 2016 produced 40,000 tons of CO2. To picture that, if you were to take a 30-foot diameter balloon and fill it only with CO2, it would weigh one ton. But UBC is releasing 40,000 of those balloons each year into the atmosphere. UBC's carbon emissions is actually more than some countries even. Is there anything that UBC is not doing right now that you think it should be to meet their 2050 goals of zero emissions? Actually? I think we're doing a lot and I think it does take, it's a process. I think there's going to be a number of factors that are going to allow us to actually achieve that zero emissions goal. One is going to be around federal policy and provincial policy on carbon pricing. The other thing is we know the landscape on renewable energy is changing dramatically. I suspect kind of moving into the future, solar is going to play a role in terms of the total energy mix on our university campus in addition to the biomass facility that we're investing in. Really to get to 2050, I would like to, to see that target move to 2040 or 2030 to get to 100%. I think it's achievable, but we want to do it in a way that doesn't waste, waste money. We want to do it in a way that financially makes sense as well. Why should people care about sustainable energy production? So often we don't think uh, about our energy until it actually, until there's a power outage or something like that. But I think as, as a collective, we need to be putting pressure on our utilities on, uh, to, to be switching off fossil fuels onto sustainable energy. We are at this crossroads right now where we recognize the impacts of climate change almost every day. I really think getting down to the micro scale in terms of what you do and where your money goes really matters in thinking about resources as something that is really connected to our daily lives and our daily actions. Personally, I think the most important thing that you can take away is that every single thing that you do in your lives, whether it's buying things or traveling from A to B, matters towards carbon emissions and it matters towards contributing to the warming effects of climate change.